Welcome to Ditch Auto Unlocking Manual Photography. My name's Jared and today we're going to take a look at sharpening up a photo. Now I took this photo of my child who much needed a haircut and uh, it was in front of a vehicle. There was this impromptu car show that we saw when we drove by and we stopped and took a look at the cars which my boys love cars and so uh, in this image he he's just a little like fuzzy he's not sharp the vehicle in the background kind of looks sharp but he's not and uh it's just the lighting wasn't on him it was obviously behind him um you know the focus just wasn't perfect it was just kind of one of those you know let's take a quick photo and move along um so there's some things that we could do to kind of make adjustments to this photo and improve it a little bit so let's actually go through and make those adjustments in lightroom so like I do, I enable profile corrections, remove chromatic aberration. You can see I have my uh, my highlight warnings and my shadow warnings turned on, which I could see up here in the histogram. So the first thing I might want to do is go to my white and black slider, hold down the alter option key, and just kind of slide the slider back a little bit. Um, and then with the blacks, just kind of slide that one, maybe till, till the warnings kind of go away. Not a whole lot of adjustment there. Uh, the highlight slider I can use to kind of, you know, try and get rid of those blown out portions. And then also the shadows, I can, you know, mess with that one a little bit if needed. So um, overall photo itself is, is kind of looking a little flatter, as you can see, which is okay because I want to bring back detail using some of the other sliders. Now, um, because this vehicle is, uh, is, is nice and um, I would like to kind of add a little bit of edginess to this photo, I might uh, increase the contrast a little bit and increase the clarity a little bit. Now, if you notice, when I do those things, it's actually darkening some areas and now I'm getting shadow warnings underneath the vehicle. I'm also getting much more harsh shadows on the face of my child here. So um, I'm not necessarily thinking about adjusting him yet. I'm looking at the overall image and what I can do to kind of make the overall image look good. So I may um, kind of increase the blue primary a little bit just to kind of emphasize the blues like the bow tie logo on the truck, the blues that my son is wearing and maybe try and get a little bit of blue out of the sky just to kind of give this photo a little bit more uh, of an interesting look. So now that I'm happy, well, maybe I should probably increase those shadows a little bit just to get rid of a little bit of those highlight warnings. I like having these warnings or these shadow warnings. I like having the highlight and shadow warnings on, not necessarily um, because I'm worried about how this photo would look when I printed it, just simply those warnings being on makes me want to go in and fix them and it's really easy to do that so I just go ahead and do it every time so I like to leave those warnings on you can turn them on and off with these little boxes up here in the top right and left hand corner of the histogram so now I need to selectively adjust my child and how do you do that I use this brush tool over here, which allows me to create a mask and make selective adjustments based on that. So what I'm probably gonna do here is just do kind of a rough paint job over the top of him. So we'll go ahead and just paint right over the top of him, like so. The hard thing about this brush is while you're painting, it's not really giving you any preview. Um, but once you're done, you can mouse over the little bullet point which is from where you started painting and, and it shows kind of a uh, a quick mask kind of a ruby lith overlay letting you know where your brush strokes were so now that i made adjustments to him i would probably want to come in and increase the shadows on him a little bit um, simply to kind of fill in some light on his face uh, to kill some of that that harsh shadows that started to happen when i added clarity and contrast to the rest of the photo You'll notice that I already had a, uh, a 0.50 increase in the exposure um, that was already applied, so it automatically applied a little bit of exposure adjustment. Um, depending on what I wanted to do, maybe if I wanted to soften him up a little bit, uh, I might um, add a little bit of noise removal to him just to soften him up, or of course you could decrease sharpness a little bit as well. Um, 
just to make it easier to see, let's go in at, at one, uh, one to one on him. So we're a little bit closer in on him now. And uh, let's just maybe a little bit more just to soften his face just a little bit because there is a little bit of kind of noise, uh, I guess maybe um, image noise on him just because of adding the clarity and all that stuff previously to the photo. Um, the nice thing about these adjustments, I could just kind of go and play with them and just kind of see what kind of adjustments it makes to his uh, little face and make sure that the lighting looks good and all that good stuff. Uh, and that it's not overly harsh or under harsh. So obviously the original purpose here was to sharpen the overall image and to sharpen him up a little bit. He definitely looks uh, a lot more in focus and sharp than he did before. Aside from the haircut, which I guarantee you we got taken care of a couple days later. So let's look at what bringing sharpness down does. It fuzzes him out just a little bit. The problem with some of these sliders is that they do overall affect whatever is either in the image or whatever you selected uh, with the paintbrush here. So in decreasing sharpness and whatnot, it's also decreasing sharpness in his eyes and his lips and nose and, and his, everything that's, that's part of that. And the problem with that is that when you have a person in your photo, you don't want the eyes or the lips to be soft. Uh, you don't want those to be out of focus because those are the things that we're drawn to when we look at a, a photo that has a person in it, is the eyes and the lips. And if the eyes and the lips are out of focus, it just feels wrong. We may not notice that the eyes and the lips are out of focus, but subconsciously we do. And so you wanna make sure that that stuff is not too soft. Um, so one of the things that I might do if I needed to soften this, would be to actually hold down the Alt or the Option key, go with a smaller brush here, and then remove eyes and lips from the selection. So this doesn't look bad to me. This is starting to look really good, so I'm not too worried about it, but that was just a tip for other photos that you might uh, find yourself needing to edit. So overall, this photo's looking much better than it did before. Let's just go all the way back to the original image here, and you can see the drastic change in this image in sharpness and clarity overall. I mean, look at how much better he pops out of this photo than the beginning, which he just was really flat, and the photo overall was pretty flat. So now, much better looking photo, definitely added sharpness and clarity, and, uh, and made him pop out of the photo. So I guess this tutorial turned into a lot more than just adding sharpening to a photo so nonetheless sometimes that's what happens you start playing with a photo and you get carried away and then before you know it the whole photo looks much better so that's going to do it for today's episode of ditch auto make sure you head on over to our website ditchauto.com there's lots of resources including other videos there for you uh, and then we have our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash ditch auto uh, which we have lots of conversations there about photography, all aspects of it, and uh, share our experiences with each other. So make sure to check that out. And we'll see you next time on Ditch Auto.